Doug Unleashed. Hello, Cheryl. How are you today? Hey, Chris. Thanks for taking my phone call. Always a pleasure. Nice to talk to you. What's going on today? Well, I I just wanted to call and say, you know, I, I think everybody may know by now all the faults that Tiger has. Um, do we know all the little stories and stuff like that that the book can give us? No, but <clears throat> I don't think anybody can say, you know, that Tiger is a saint. But what I do want to say is, um, you know, I, I've, I've been lucky enough to see him at at the Open. I've been lucky enough to see him a couple of times down at the um, at Augusta. And I don't know if you've ever seen him at. A, I'm sure you have, Chris. I, I've it, seen I've seen him live. Yes. Okay. I mean, it, it's like twenty thousand people follow him around, and it and and I don't think it matters. You know, before uh, everything came out, and even after everything came out, people are still going to. No, oh, I agree with that. And so, so basically, all around the golf course, you're right. Uh, he he is a magnet. So, in other words, then you think this is overkill? This book? No, I don't think this is overkill. I think the book will sell because you know it, it, it's going to appeal to what people really want to know, which is all the juicy little. Well, look at me. I, I love this stuff. You don't like this stuff? I do. I like it. You know, and, and, and I mean, we all know that Tiger is great. I, I've never seen anybody like him ever other than Jordan in my life, ever. So that appeals to everybody. But for people to come on here and and criticize the these um, uh, authors for writing this book... I think is is a little hypocritical because if if they were in the same position, they would do the same thing. I well, mean, and, and they and they have a solution. Don't buy the book. I mean, right. if, if they're so, I mean, you know, put there. If, if people are so upset, good call. If, if if there are a lot of people, and we've had a lot of calls on it today that indicate that they are bothered by this, which I'm surprised. If they are so bothered, the tiger is being portrayed here poorly. Well, then fine, don't go buy it. Nobody's telling you what. Nobody's telling you to buy the book. Don't don't partake in it. But don't sit there and tell me that's not interesting. That's not fair. Don't sit there and tell me that Tiger, you know, killing a house in Augusta, or Tiger blowing off Jimmy Roberts, or you know, Tiger. Um, there's a variety of little things in here that I could bring up. That, that you know, Tiger. You know what I told you yesterday about the third, the U.S. Amateur, the third, the third one he's trying to win when he didn't acknowledge. Um, when he didn't acknowledge uh, the player who told him the opponent uh, last day about the bad mark and Tiger was going to be disqualified and he never acknowledged the guy. Don't tell me that stuff's not interesting because that stuff's interesting. I'm sorry, that stuff's interesting. Yes, it's also interesting to know that Tiger went to a clinic when he was a young kid with his father and his father uh, took him to a hole in front of a lot of kids, put three balls down on the ground and said, Tiger, do me a favor. You see that, that hole over there is 188 yards uh, and it's a little dog leg left. I want you to hit a draw. That's left or right. I believe it's left. I get them mixed up, draws and fades. But hit a draw and the ball goes left to right, lands on the green 10 feet. All right, Tiger, next shot. Hit a fade, which is the other way, right to left. So he hits a fade, and the ball um, uh, is 12 feet, and then hits stinger, which is that line drive shot, and Tiger hits a stinger 188 yards. It lands over the hole, bounces, and draws back five feet in front of the cup. You want that? That's in there. How about that? Three shots, 188 yards away, all three different techniques now. Three different ways to hit the same shot. Nobody would do that. When you're 188 yards away, you're just happy that you get the ball in the green. I mean, you're not you're not doing it three different ways. That's all you care about. Any pro, same way. I mean, let me stick the ball in the green with the best way I can do it. Tiger did it three different ways. I don't know, I'm fascinated. I can't get enough of it. Fascinating. Did you hear me do the top there, Tiger, about the uh, Stevie about the Augusta House? I did. I heard uh, bits and pieces of it. Yes, yes. Very interesting. Very how about, interesting. How about Clark Harmon? How about Butch Harmon giving Jimmy Roberts grief at, a, at the U.S. Open in nineteen in nineteen two thousand? Well, there's a lot of dirt in that book, huh? Jeez. I mean, I mean, geez. Are you going to tell Jimmy Roberts to shut the hell up? Who are you? I'm going to hear. I'm going to listen to Butch Harmon say this. That's who I'm going to listen to now. Butch, Butch Harmon. Harmon. Go, go teach the sport.
I'm Butch Herman now. That, that idiot, that's what I'm going to listen to? That drives me crazy. Oh, when I hear that, that drives me crazy. I, that I can't tell. I can tell. I can tell. Now, are you a little tiger out? You don't want to read this stuff because you know no. more about it or you get a kick out of this no, stuff? No, I mean, I'm, I'm tigered out. No, no it's, uh, I find it interesting, actually. How does Tiger Woods hang out at a house in Augusta year after year and do nothing but trash it in the four days he's there and not leave the lady a nickel to fix the, to, to, for the cleaning services? That's despicable behavior if that's accurate. I mean, think about that. How about if you rented a house to a, somebody who was playing the Westchester Classic? You live not too far from there. And the person, the player who played there three years in a row, led the house to shambles, left, departed, and then you had to go get cleaning services and couldn't even stay in the house. That's a disgrace. Clean it up. That's, I mean, that is, that is mind-boggling that somebody would do that. It's a disgrace. Uh, it's, it's it's actually hard. Defend, it's actually def- hard to believe. You can't defend that behavior, and then and then do phone and then uh, spend money on phone calls to Sweden and not leave a hundred dollars for the lady to, so she does, so she doesn't have to pay the bill. Can you imagine that? I stay at your house for three days and I make calls to Europe and I don't I don't bother giving you the money and I just leave. I tell you, if that's accurate, that's despicable behavior. Well, if it's if it's not accurate, I want Tiger to sue Katan. You know that's right. how he spoke to Peg Lewis, the lady who owned the house. Steve, come on. Yeah, that's that's boy. There's some there's some damaging Dirk, damaging yeah. stuff in that book. You blame it. You blame it on Earl Woods. Um, I mean, I think he has to have a hand in that behavior. I mean, you know, basically that. that I, look, I, how could you blame him fully? I don't think that's fair to do. But seems like everything you're telling me on some of the things you've read in this book that. Um, you know that was uh, not an easy uh, childhood. As far I'll leave as- you one last thing. If you had a pro, if you had a, if Kyle was, and you could tell at four years old, was going to be a great baseball player. Yeah. And you got him private instruction from some hitting guru in Ardsley. Okay. Uh-huh. Would you pay that instructor eventually? For working with your four-year-old, or do you say, you know what, you're lucky you're getting a chance to work with this next George Brett, so you're not getting a nickel. What would you do? <laughs> of course, of course, I would pay him. Earl Woods did not. That's just uh, a lot of this stuff is shocking to me. It really is. Keith Hernandez in a minute about Rusty Staub. Looking forward to that. Here's our good buddy Steve Torrey with the sports bite on Mad Dog. 